Hello my baby beans, welcome back to a new video. I am so super duper excited to be reading this. And I'm gonna give a trigger warning ahead of time. So trigger warnings involve death and blood and yeah. But I I like I just finished reading this and it's a Bakugo Kotsky ex dying reader and I, I just, it's so good, and I almost cried when when I read it, and I, I really, really want to read it to you guys. <laughs> it, it, I, I, I hope you guys like it as much as I did. I'm going to give credit to the reader, or to the writer. Um, it's Millie Fanfic on Wattpad, and I will link their... Um, I will link this fanfic and I will link their account down below because they deserve it. This is amazing. And um, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Class 1A and 1B of the UA High Hero courses were attacked. That is old news. The Vanguard Action Squad of the League of Villains attacked the high schoolers at their training camp, run by pro hero team the Wild Pussycats. Their location compressed by an unknown source, also old news. Katsuki Bakugo of Class A was kidnapped in hopes of turning him to their side, but was rescued by some of his classmates while All Might dueled with the villain All for One. All Might was forced to retire, telling his predecessor it was his turn. All of this was old, beaten to death news to Katsuki Bakugo. Why was everyone still coddling him like a baby? He escaped unharmed, and All Might ended up beating All for One, allowing authorities to knock him up, to lock him up, far away. He didn't care about himself for once. His mind was on a girl, a girl who he fell for during their first year at UA, a girl who brought him out of, a girl who brought a part of him who brought out a part of him that he hid from everyone else in fear of being called weak or soft. A girl who he had gave his first kiss. A girl he loved. Her name was Wyan Allen. She was at the training camp with them when the villains attacked and was attacked by the villain called Mustard with a group of other students in the form of gassing. A class A girl named Momo managed to create gas masks for those affected, saving everyone from major harm except for Kyoko Jiro and Toru Hagakure because they were knocked unconscious by the time they got the masks. When they turned to where Wyan was, she was gone. The immediate assumption was that she was kidnapped with Kotsky, but in reality, she had tried to run off for help because this was before the classes were given permission to fight back, and the gas had caused her to pass out farther in the woods. Yuga Ayoma had carried Jira and Hagakure back to safety, as an injured Momo and Class B's aways ran from Nomu, as well as scrambling to find Wyan. She wasn't found until well after the villains had either escaped or been captured as they searched the woods. She had been exposed to the gas much longer than the others, and she was rushed off to the hospital. Wyan stayed unconscious for longer than Jiro and Hagakure, 
and was the only UA student that remained in the hospital, even after Izuku Midoriya, Eiichiro Kirishima, Tenya Ida, and Shoto Todoroki helped Bakugo escape. Strangely, she awoke not long after Katsuki was returned home, and the doctors stated that it was subconscious awakening after being filled in on their relationship from their classmates. The bad news was that Wine's body had re reacted differently to the gas and basically shut down. She developed a almost cancerous disease in her lungs and her body was almost com was almost comatose. The doctors couldn't diagnose it for they had never encountered a gas like mustards before. She was hanging on onto life, and the doctors were surprised she stayed alive for as long as she has, meaning she could die any second. It was a week or so after she woke up when Wyan Ellen had a very bad health Wyan Ellen had a very bad day, health wise. More tests were run, more machines hooked up, but they couldn't know what was happening to her. She could barely breathe, and she was coughing up blood, and her vision was darkening and blurry. This happened all day, on and off, and her family, as well as Kotsky, were told to come in. They knew it was because she might die, but the nurse on the phone couldn't bring herself to say it. When her parents came, she could barely talk, so there wasn't much to say. They just sat. But when Katsuki Bakugo came, a few hours later, she could talk, but her voice was raspy and just under a whisper. Why yet? His husky voice brought a happiness to flow in her body. And she smiled at him under the breath mask, or under the breathing mask, that fogged up every, whenever she spoke or talked. Hey, Kotsky. She managed, but immediately began hacking. He sat in the chair beside her hospital bed and took her hand. His was bigger than hers, soft and warm. Don't talk unless you have to, he said quietly. She nodded, reaching across to him with her free hand and running a hand through his surprisingly soft, spiky ash blonde hair. The normal pink flush came to his cheeks at, at her touch, and he took that hand as well, kissing it. She closed her orbs contently before opening them again. Kotsky? Wyan asked. His dark crimson eyes met hers questioningly. Kotsky? Am I going to die? Bakugo's breath caught in his throat, and he forced himself to inhale, a sharp pain running through his chest. Her beautiful eyes watched him, waiting. I, I, I'm sorry for asking, but no one else will answer me honestly. He didn't reply, just rubbed her hand with his thumb like he knew she loved. I, I don't know. Katsuki finally managed to choke out his eyes burning with tears he was forcing to hold back. Her favorite song, the one playing in the background, was playing softly in the background, its slightly sad theme making his heart feel like it was going to shatter. Wyan nodded, taking a breath. Just hearing her breathe was painful. It was hard to imagine how it actually felt like. It was like nails on a chalkboard. He ran his fingers along her cheek, brushing her hair, 
her locks of hair out of her face. He still found her extremely beautiful, despite all the machines and wires, and that damned mask that kept him from kissing her. Perhaps goodbye. How is everyone? She asked, smiling at him even though he had just told her she might die. Everyone's recovered. Patsky answered, watching her closely. Fear struck him. She was paler than before, and her normal bright eyes were duller. Wyatt, I'm so sorry. Why? She looked at him, urgency in her broken voice. I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't save you. His head fell. You were left in those burning woods. What if you died right then and there? Wyan shook her head. Love, you were kidnapped. She said simply. I don't blame anyone. Except myself for wandering off. <laughs> you were trying to get help. You didn't. You did the right thing. Kotsky argued. I wasn't strong enough. And I was taken so damn easily. Hell, I was the reason all might end. That was the reason for All Might's end. Wine reached over and gently pulled him towards her, hugging him closely with as much firmness as her weak body could muster. Their foreheads touched, the closest they've gotten to actually kissing since before the camp. Her hands were behind his neck, and they looked into each other's eyes. It wasn't your fault. She didn't have to force her voice to protect, to project now that his ear was close to the mask. None of it. Please, stop blaming yourself. Bakugo opened his mouth to say something, but she stopped him. You have to promise me, Kotsky. When I'm gone, you won't be guilty. You were one of the best things to ever happen to me. And I... She quickly pushed Kotsky away as she began coughing. Instead of stopping like it had begun, it continued. It hurt her to cough and she doubled over in her sitting position. Her hearing clouded, but she could barely make out Bakugo yelling for the doctors. She tasted blood, but swallowed it. Her machines were beeping, beeping aggressively, her lungs burning. She couldn't breathe, and she knew what was happening. Death was finally taking her. She grabbed Kotsky indignantly ripping off her mask and pushed her lips on his, kissing him deeply. I love you, she managed to say through her coughing after he broke away, staring at her frozen. The doctors quickly swarmed around her, gasping, realizing she took off the mask. They fastened the back on her and her vision faded to black. The doctors held Kotsky back, pulling him away from Wyan. The machines were still loud, but they were slowing down. His screams echoed through the halls as he desperately reached for her over the doctor's wide-coated shoulders, calling her name. Wyan! <laughs> his voice was breaking through his cries, hot tears streaming down his cheeks and dripping off of them. Let me see her! No! 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 
Her eyes met his once more, pleading before her eyelids fluttered shut. The beeping was even slower now. Wyatt! I love you! He repeated the heartbreaking cry over and over, his voice attempting to drown out the beeps. Beep. 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 The beep suddenly halted. The doctors and nurses stopped. Something shattered inside Kotsky, and he froze, falling to his knees. He didn't move. He didn't blink. He stared at the now still body of the girl he loved. The monitor showing her heart had stopped. The doctors tried CPR for a hot minute, but it was obvious she was gone. His shaky hands pressed against his heart, and he doubled over, turning his head to the hall, puking. She was gone. <laughs> really gone. She wouldn't be there anymore to kiss him, to tell him everything was okay, to encourage him in his quest to becoming the number one hero. To dry the tears he feared to shed in front of anyone else. Bakugo clutched his chest, sobbing. <laughs> Why then? I love you. Many years later, a man stood in front of a grave. <laughs> Sorry, I'm actually crying now. <laughs> A man stood in front of a grave. The smooth granite was spotless, her name engraved in it, as well as the date of her death. His mask fell from his face, and he removed his gloves and gauntlets on his wrists, placing them behind him. <laughs> He kneeled in front of it, running his fingers along the letters in front of her name. Sorry. <laughs> running his fingers along the letters of her name, tears slowly making their way down his cheeks. The words to her favorite song, the one in the hospital room, rang in his head. And he smiled softly, remembering her, her laugh, her grin, the feeling of her lips on his. He placed a bouquet of roses by the gravestone and closed his red eyes. I did it, Wyatt. I became an official hero. Ground Zero, the name you suggested. I used it, he said in a hushed voice, and I miss you so, so much. He wiped away the tears bolting on his jawline, chuckling. I, <laughs> I brought you roses, even though you always called them cliche. I thought you were beautiful. I thought they were beautiful. And I had to get them for you. Kotsky Bakugo stood, smiling at the grave. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> and this last part is just gonna get me. I know it. Happy birthday, woman. I love you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I've actually never cried like this over a fanfiction before. <laughs> wow, this is really good. <laughs> and gosh, I'm wearing eyeliner and mascara as well, so I can't wait to see what I'm gonna look like when I look in the mirror. <laughs> oh my gosh, this was amazing.
I really hope you guys enjoyed this fanfiction. I will link it down below if you guys want to read more of this writer's stories that they published. This writer is truly amazing. I am legitimately in tears right now. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, guys, make sure to go follow Millie Fanfic. I will link them down below. They are truly amazing. And just go give them all their love. Like, all your love and support. Because this was an amazing fanfiction. And props to you, Millie Fanfic. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I love you all so, so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and, um, yeah, as, as I said, I will link Millie fanfic and this fanfiction down below. And, um, <laughs> I will also link my Discord down below and my Instagram if you guys ever want to talk to me. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I love you all so much and I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did because this is like my second time reading it through and the first time I tried holding back my tears but clearly it didn't work um <laughs> uh, oh my gosh um but yeah I hope you all enjoyed and I love you all and I will see you in the next video which hopefully will be the next episode to mute um, but yeah, I love you all. Have a nice day or night or evening. And I will see you all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.